when to sell your investment property. Let's talk about that. Hi, my name is Tanya Bird. I'm with Keller Williams Realty Atlanta Partners in Peachtree City, Georgia. And today we're gonna to be talking about when is a good time to sell your investment property. And we have some questions that we can explore around this subject so that you can listen in and see if some of these scenarios might fit your particular situation and you're thinking now is a good time to sell. So let's get started. Our first question is, should I sell my investment property during a seller's market? And my answer to you would be yes, if you have a lot of equity in your home. So you have a lot of equity, meaning that you've paid down on your mortgage and prices have increased and you've got a good chunk of money you can cash out. Also, keep a lookout on whether or not buyer demand is still high. And the indicator to look at that is month supply. A seller's market is five months or less meaning that the sellers typically have the upper hand on negotiations in a seller's market. So if we're still a seller's market and we still have steady demand, then yes, it might be a good time to, to sell that investment property. And then of course, if you were thinking about it all along that you just wanted to cash out right now, then now's the time. Should I sell my rental property if rental prices start to tank and drop? Yes, you want to get out ahead of that if you start seeing a trend in the rental prices dropping. And there's a few indicators that we're going to look at to see if that's going to be the case. So if we see an increase in new construction, meaning more homes are being put on the market, and we see an increase in resales start to tick up onto the market, and interest rates continue to stay low and our economy healthy, people have jobs, then yes, rents should be going down at that point because there's not that much of a demand for rent. So when you start seeing those things happening in the market and that people are starting to shift from rentals into more permanent residences, and interest rates stay low, then you may want to get out ahead of that before rental prices drop too much. Should I sell my investment property if I have a low cap rate? Well, first of all, let's define what a cap rate is. So a cap rate is a statistical indicator that tells you how profitable you are on your investment property. And the higher the percentage, the more profitable your investment is. So let's look at a mathematical example here so we can get some clarity on how to calculate cap rate. First, you're gonna take the purchase price. And in this example, our purchase price is $100,000. Then you're gonna take the gross annual rental income. And in this example, it's $12,000. You're gonna minus any expenses. So that could be repairs, taxes, insurance, if you have a property management company managing it, that all should be subtracted out of your expenses. In this example, they indicate it's $5,000. And so that gives you a net operating income of $7,000. So you take that $7,000 of operating income and you're gonna divide that into your purchase price and that gives you a cap rate of 7%. And 7% is a pretty good number. So the higher it is, the better it is. If you do this math on your own investment property and you find it to be very low, then you may want to consider selling your investment property. Well, what happens if my rental property needs a bunch of repairs? Should I consider selling it? Well, that all depends on what your repairs are. I mean, have you got in over your skis and you can't make those repairs? Maybe you don't have enough cash flow to cover those repairs so that you can bring the house back up to where it needs to be. Or maybe you're in an HOA situation that if you allow for those repairs to 
you know, go beyond what they should and then you have a homeowners association telling you that you must make these repairs or you're gonna get fined by the HOA. You should also consider what the buyer's needs are out there if you're gonna sell. Will they ask for seller concessions? Do you have enough equity to cover those seller's concessions? What I will tell you is price will always overcome condition and there's gonna be somebody out there that if you can't make those repairs and you're trying to sell it as is, that you can do so and you're gonna find a good do-it-yourselfer or another investment person who's gonna come into that property and take it away and off your hands. So if you're in that situation, I would say yes. Sell it as is if you want to. Just know you may not get full market value for it, but there's always a buyer out there for all kinds of properties. What happens if I sell this investment property and then I get hit with a bunch of capital gains taxes? Well, there's a couple of ways you can approach this. First of all, you need to determine if you can write off any losses to lower the amount of profit you make on that house. You can always do a 1031 exchange. So a 1031 exchange is once you've sold that property, you take those proceeds and you get an attorney to hold it into a 1031 exchange and you have six months to find a like property to go invest in. So you could take that money and go and invest in a different property that might have a better rate of return, a better cap rate, or just might have better rental prices going for it or less repairs and you won't get taxed if you put that money back into another like property. And then the third option is you could actually make it your primary residence. If you make it your primary residence, then you may not face any kind of capital gains taxes. You always wanna check out with a CPA on this, so don't take my word for it when it comes to taxes. When is it that you sell the property it might make for a better financial move? It might make for a better financial move if you have another opportunity that is better than your investment property that you can then take that money and you can spread it across many other different investments. So you're not putting all your eggs into one basket, which leads to is your net worth tied up into this one big investment property and you're not diversified in your vest investments, this may be a good time to, again, do one of those 1031 exchanges. Maybe you buy two properties for the one that you had to diversify it a little. Or maybe you want to put that money into some other kind of investment in the stock, IRAs, mutual funds, those kind of investments. That's where you really need a good CPA on your side and financial advisor so they can look at your portfolio, see where your net worth is, and help you make the de best decision possible when it comes to making good financial sense. And our final question, are you still satisfied with your investment property? I mean, you might come to a point where you're not satisfied. Maybe you're having a life event that you need to cash out on the on the investment that you have because you need to get a hold of that cash or you're just too tired of dealing with being a landlord and it's just not in it for you and you want to put that money somewhere else or what if you just can't handle the maintenance anymore if you just can't handle the maintenance and you're in over your skis it might be more financially beneficial for you to get out from under that investment property and do something else with that money. So I'm glad we had this little chat today and we were able to explore some reasons that you may wanna cash out your investment property for. And of course, if you need help with investment properties, let me know, I'm, I'm here to help you. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to watch the next video. And I'll talk to you guys later, bye. Are you digging the kind of content I'm producing? Then be sure to watch this next video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way, you'll be in the know when I release my next video.